Hello, my fellow slivers. Yes, this is me in human form. So I want to start this video by saying that I love Magic the Gathering. Like, I, I really love Magic the Gathering. In fact, uh, that's why I decided to, to start a YouTube channel about Magic the Gathering because I wanted to share my love for the game with a much bigger community than the one here in my city or in my country. I wanted to share, like I said, all the things that I love about the game. The gameplay itself, uh, you know, the, the complexity, but also the, the lore, the art, um, uh, the funny aspects of it all. I don't know, I, I, I love Magic the Gathering, yeah, that's the point. But even if you love something, it, it doesn't always mean that you're gonna have a healthy relationship with that thing. I mean, I think we've all had that that X, right? Uh, sure, uh, there was love, maybe even a lot of love. However, uh, the relationship or whatever, it, it, it made us feel sad, maybe even miserable most of the time. It made us feel angry. Uh, there was a lot of drama. And somehow we just couldn't quit, right? So I'm gonna start this video off by telling you a, a little story and it's about my two best friends, my two best Magic the Gathering friends and obviously now they're much more than that. I, I love these two guys to death. They're, they're like brothers to me. However, <laughs> they are a, a great example of why I chose the title for this video. So, Double Masters gets announced, right? And I remember thinking, wow, Mana Crypt, Force of Will, Jay is the Mind Sculptor, Karn Liberated, uh, Blightsteel Colossus, Doubling Season, Atraxa. I thought it was sweet. I, I like, I genuinely thought it was one of the best, if not the best masters set I have ever seen, uh, pricing aside. And so I have a, a, WhatsApp, a WhatsApp group with these two friends and I texted them and I was like, wow, did you guys check uh, Double Masters already? It's going to be sweet. Like, I, I love this product. And their response, like both of them, the, their, their response was, no man, this is another cash grab. I hate Double Masters, it sucks, the reprints suck, uh, the pricing suck, sucks, um, the VIP boosters are an even bigger cash graph, so it sucks even harder, that's it, I'm done with Magic the Gathering, I'm done with Wizards of the Coast, it's time to sell everything and just quit this crap. Uh, the day of release arrives, you know, for Double Masters and what do you know, I check <laughs> the WhatsApp group and these guys already posted pictures of all the booster packs that they bought. Uh, to this day, I, I haven't bought a single Double Masters booster pack. Um, because of the pandemic and whatnot, I, I was basically jobless for about six months, so my priorities were obviously uh, different from buying Double Masters booster packs. But I truly love the product, and to this day I have bought zero uh, Double Masters booster packs. And uh, my friends, who hated it, it made them angry, it made them anxious, it made them heat hate Wizards of the Coast, it, it made them wanna quit Magic the Gathering. Uh, since the release of Double Masters they have already bought like the equivalent of one and a half boxes of, of Double Masters. And again, they said they hated it. They said they didn't want anything to do with that kind of thing. But what, what's even funnier is that <laughs> they did the same thing with collector's boosters 
they did the same thing with Modern Horizons, with Ultimate Masters. They, they've done the same thing with almost every single product from Wizards of the Coast from the last three or four years. So, <laughs> does this sound familiar to you, like, at all? Have you, have you seen this or something similar anywhere? I mean, maybe you've done this kind of thing yourselves. I don't know. Uh, recently, uh, a lot of people from the community, you know, from regular players to big content creators to everything in between, uh, well, a lot of people have expressed their feelings towards the new secret lair, uh, The Walking Dead or whatever the official name might be. And so far, I mean, I agree with most of the things that are being said. However, um, I don't know, most of the, the videos or the, the posts or whatever, uh, they, they have all felt dramatic, a little bit fake, a little bit weird. And like I said, I, I agree with most of the things that are being discussed. Do I think that this is yet another cash graph by Hasbro or Wizards of the Coast? Of course it is. Do I agree that introducing something like The Walking Dead, which in my opinion is just an overrated zombie drama show, uh, do I think that introducing something like that to the game um, makes Magic the Gathering feel kind of weird and, and cheap and plastic? Yes, I do. And it's just my opinion, but I agree with, with the people that think this way. Uh, do I think that introducing mechanically unique cards, especially in this manner, you know, uh, having said that they would never do the same thing again, do I think it was okay? No, I, I don't think it was okay. They, they clearly betrayed the community or however we want to see it and so yeah I agree it, it was kind of a crappy move on their part so yes I mean a lot of the things that uh, members of the community are saying they I, I agree with with most of these things the one take that I especially liked was the one found in a in an MTG goldfish article by Seth, better known as Saffron Olive. Um, I'm, if you haven't read it, I'm gonna leave the, the article in the description of this video. And I really enjoyed that article, and I think it's, it's the best take I've seen uh, regarding this whole secret layer walking dead issue. Um, the article is very evidence and fact-based. It's very straight to the point. It even offers some suggestions, keyword suggestions to, to us customers as to how we should pr proceed with all of these things. And that's why I like I, that's why I liked it so much. So if you haven't read it, it basically says that um, Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast are a business, okay? I mean, it's pretty obvious, but I think sometimes we, we forget that kind of thing. Wizards of the Coast, and especially Hasbro, yeah, they're a business. They don't care uh, about making me happy. They don't care about making you happy. They're not our friends. They are not my daddy. They're not your daddy. They, it's the, free, it's a free market, man. <laughs> they, they produce a service or a product, and they offer it in exchange of money. And it's up to us, you know, customers, to decide if we take it or leave it. So, they don't really care about what we have to say. They don't really care about what we post on Facebook or on Twitter or whatever but they do care about what their numbers say or what their numbers represent 
think about the story that I told at the beginning of this video uh, about my two friends. They, they hated Double Masters, they hated Ultimate Masters, they hated Modern Horizons, they hated Collector's Boosters. It, it made them hate Wizards of the Coast. It, it, made them want, it, it made them want to quit Magic the Gathering. And day of release, they still bought everything anyways. Imagine there is like a little pizza place in your town. And one day, they make this, this awesome pizza that everyone loves. Okay, so everyone loves it, everyone orders that pizza, sold out. Now there's a now there's demand for that pizza, alright? The restaurant makes it again. Sold out again. So the demand for that pizza increases. People uh, I, I don't know, like war spreads around town and there's more customers and more people want to try this new awesome pizza. A day comes when this pizza is not really what it made it famous in the first place. But people still eat it, people still buy it, people still order this pizza all the time. So what kind of message do you think the little restaurant is receiving? Now, uh, imagine, uh, well, or now, well, yeah, imagine all of this, but in the context of Hasbro, which is a, well, it, it's an international company, a multi-million dollar company. Like, there are no waiters that you're going to be able to complain to. Uh, there are no chefs. You're not gonna see the manager standing right next to the register. Uh, you know, you're not going to be able to go and tell him, you know, this pizza is not what it used to be, man. You're, you're totally ripping us off. No. So that's why I, I liked this article by Seth, better known as Seth and Olive, so much. I mean, it's 100% on point. Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, they're, they're always going to watch the numbers. And, and man, if, if, they, if everything they put out there makes a killing, you know, it's all out in a matter of days or even hours. What's the message? And this isn't this isn't a movie, man. I mean, this is not a TV show. This is this is not The Walking Dead. There are no heroes. There are no villains. Um, it's not the rules committee's fault for not banning these cards, you know. Um, so stop harassing Sheldon Minery and those guys. It's not their fault. It's not even the fault of many or most of Wizards of the Coast employees. I don't think they have a say in this kind of things anyway, so it's not their fault. And we also have to start being honest with ourselves. For example, what would you think of someone who says, okay, I need a method of transportation. That's it. I, I just want a method of transportation. So someone uh, buys a Volkswagen to this person, uh, it's an old Volkswagen, but it's perfectly functional, it's a method of transportation, and the person goes like, no, this is not what I wanted, I, I wanted a, a Ferrari or a Rolls Royce, I mean, what would you think of someone <laughs> like that? So, sometimes we, we say, well, I love Magic the Gathering, I just want to play Magic the Gathering, but what we really mean is, I love all the shiny and expensive cards from all of the formats and that's what I want to play. It, it's not the same thing. So now I'm, I'm gonna finish this video by reading some of the comments that you, my fellow sleepers, uh, have left on, on, the, on the post, on the Facebook post I made about this whole situation. So Will Larson says, I think it's fine, it's not something I need to play with, it's unlimited, print run to order so millions of players can order this if they want to. I don't think that's the case, but okay. You don't have to buy anything in Magic the Gathering. That is true. Love. I feel like so many players feel forced to buy, which is ridiculous, I also agree. It's a smart move for Watsi because it might get people into the game, 
who otherwise would never try to get into it. Erika Dunn. I only started reading the Walking Dead comics, but I still like crossovers. It really should have been available. It really should have been made available globally. I agree. Ruben Hox. Oh, I'm sorry if I mispronounce some of this. Ruben Hoxima. If they printed this as alternates like the Godzilla cards alongside a Commander set or Commander Legends where the base version is available, I would be 100% for it. Me too. All other secret layers have contained cards that are accessible elsewhere, exactly. Fetchlands are debatable, yes. Which is what made them a perfect product. I don't know if perfect, but yeah. No one needed them to play the cards, but if you wanted a fancy version, you could get it. And it would be highly collectible. All of that is true. Dale Lance. I'm not a fan of zombies, except for my zombie vampire tribal deck, so I've never seen the series. If people want to spend their money on those cards, fine by me. Preston Carter. I think it's a cool idea to do secret layer crossovers, but if, they're, if they create unique cards that don't get printed in any set or booster, then they should be banned in all formats. I'm not saying they are or not gonna be... I'm not saying they are or are not gonna get broken, but to keep it someone random short of buying singles, it's fair. It's unfair, I think, that's what he was trying to say. Joshua Wade, very cool guy, I appreciate you, man. I would be surprised if functional reprints of these cards don't show up in sets within a year. Me too. Four, four out of five of these cards scream Innistrad and we're getting two Innistrad sets next fall. Are we? Really? Negan seems destined for a commander product, but could get a functional reprint in a set. True. I, know, I understand why people don't like this product. It doesn't fit thematically. It will be expensive and hard to get outside of North America, and it opens the door to Watsi printing format staples in a secret layer. I think Hasbro and Watsi need to figure out a way that players outside of North America can get secret layers, but unfortunately we can do anything about, about mechanically unique staples being printed in a secret layer until it happens, and not much when it does. While I'm not a huge flavor story guy, I get it. I'm a Transformers fan, and I'd be pretty miffed if Sponge Bob Tron showed up in the Transformers universe. All that said, I think a lot of the people who have a problem with these cards are overreacting to an insane degree. Kinda. I have seen way too many players saying they have no problem being rude to people who buy this refusing to play them or hating them out of the game. I've seen the same thing. It is not acceptable to punish players for the punish players for the decisions made by the WOTC and or the rules committee. It's not okay to make someone feel bad for buying an MTG product they like and will have fun with just because you don't like it. I agree. Yes, Rule Zero lets, you play, lets your playgroup ban these cards, but it does not allow you to be a toxic ass a-hole and ruin the game for people because of a de decision made by a, a corporation that you don't like and they have no control over. So there you go. Like, I, I didn't... There's a lot of more comments, I think, but I think that's enough. I, I didn't want to make a video like forcing my opinions on any on anybody. I, I didn't want to make a video pointing out uh, fingers and calling people out, be it from Wizards of the Coast or the Rules Committee or the community. I, I didn't want that. I, I wanted I wanted to present you with some scenarios, with some context with some realities even so that you can form formulate your own opinion I think that's important uh, you should always formulate your own opinion you know uh, you should always think for yourselves anyways cheer up my fellow slivers life is great okay I know we love Magic the Gathering but even when something like a new secret lair or a new cash graph appears on the horizon, look, the sun still shines, the sun still comes up, okay? So relax, breathe, uh, hang out with your friends, work out, do some sports, play video games, have sex, and above all, take care of yourselves and enjoy life you should always enjoy the things you do okay i'll see you on the next video